Today I wanted to talk about combat in RPGs, I guess. If you take a look of a rule book of D&D or a similar game, you will notice that a lot of space in the rule book is reserved for combat rules and when you play it, a lot of the time playing it is used on the resolution of a combat situation. And you might find that this focus on combat is maybe just a bit too much. But why does D&D or similar games have such a large focus on combat? Well, for one thing, um, you have to keep in mind where D&D comes from. It was originally developed as a fantasy supplement for the war game Chainmail that Gary Gygax and his friends developed and played. And as such, uh, early versions of D&D took pretty much just the combat rooms from that war game. And those naturally most of the rules revolved around combat. Now you also have to keep in mind what type of adventures you usually play in D&D. And these are these daring, swashbuckling, high adventure, high fantasy stories similar to something like Lord of the Rings or Conan the Barbarian. And while uh, Lord of the Rings, for example, didn't have a huge page count on combat, it had its famous battle scenes that were elemental to the progress of the story. Also, combat situations are just exciting. Uh, a lot is happening, a lot of movement, and it's a life or death situation. The, uh, the conflict in a combat gets resolved immediately and definitely. But if you were to play a game set in a different genre, a spaghetti western for example, or a Chanbawa samurai movie, you would find that the D&D combat rules do not represent that sort of combat at all. In a spaghetti western it's like the opponents staring into each other's eyes for up to 10 minutes and then uh, they draw, the hero usually draws uh, part of a second quicker, they shoot, they hit, they kill, done. Uh, similar in a Chanbara Samurai movie, you have a long build up until uh, the tension is so thick you can cut it with a knife. And then just an explosion of violence. And because in D&D you usually have a number of hit points, maybe even a huge number of hit points, combat is not over in an instance. It usually lasts longer. Would be a prolonged sword fight, something like from the Lord of the Rings movies or the Princess Bride, Three Musketeers movie. With lots of flash techniques on display. But if you want to run this uh, Spaghetti Western, Shanbara style, quick and deadly combat, you can probably do it with a few rules modifications. Hell, if you uh, want to go all out, whoever wins initiative kills the other guy. That would actually make for a really simple combat system. Uh, you can resolve the whole combat with just one roll. And maybe you take the build up to the start of the violence into account. And you can maybe study your opponent's psychology. Maybe across several encounters with your opponents maybe over a drink, maybe over a prolonged dinner. You get to know him, you get to know uh, what he's like and what's his sign that he's going to attack is. Once read in a book, I think book five or six in the 
Honor Harrington series from David Weber, which is actually a science fiction series, but in that book they had a jurisdictional sword duel. And uh, that was structured like for these samurai films. They called it the crease. They were looking for the sign that the opponent himself doesn't even know the sign that he's going to attack. Because in that instant, in that fraction of a second, you decide you're going to attack. You're not thinking about defense and will let yourself open for a counterattack. So uh, that was at least the theory in those books. So if you attack during that instant, when your opponent is thinking about attacking you, when he's going to attack you and you're just faster and attack him in that instant, you win. To simulate something like this, you could have a few scenes introducing your opponents and uh, maybe you have a few roles trying to get some information on your opponent and then during that build up you do something like an empathy check and these points you accumulate of all of these themes will be added to this one role, this one initiative role, do or die. But if you are running a game in a drawer where combat is really not all that important, you will find you really don't all need all of those rules and if it comes to a combat you'd rather resolve it really quick and preferably with uh, the rules you already know. For example, Fate works like this. The combat rules are really just uh, an application of the contest rules. And that doesn't have to be an armed conflict. The contest could also be uh, a debate where you bring forth arguments to slowly wear down your opponent and eventually win when you, when you break down your opponent's position. Or in 7th C, 2nd edition, that is a game that is in the swashbuckling drawing. Uh, it takes uh, many cues from old Pirates movie or Three Musketeers movies. So uh, combat is a huge factor in there. But in that combat you do not necessarily have to use weapons and your fighting skills. Uh, you can use other skills to take down your opponents. Maybe you use stealth and take out your opponents one by one by hiding behind curtains and then dragging them up into the dark. The combat system itself is designed in a way that you at least use some fencing terms like faint or repost. I personally find the system is not all that deep. One of the reasons why combat or other physical activities have a bigger scope in a rule set than, for example, diplomacy and talking to people, convincing people, is that those activity needs to be simulated at the table. But the diplomacy part, uh, the, the talking part, you can just play out can act it out. That part is not so different in tabletop RPG and live action roleplay. Talking to people, trying to convince people, lying to people, deceiving people, uh, these human interaction skills, these talking skills, 
is something we all are to a varying degree competent in. We intuitively know the rules governing these interactions. We know the language. We know when uh, we've lost an argument, or at least we should. <laughs> now, you might say, but I'm playing a very charismatic character who's really good at diplomacy, and I myself, I'm a bit shy and I don't really know rhetoric that well. Does it mean I can play this character? No, no, not at all. You can certainly handle these situations uh, at the gaming table. Maybe if your GM knows that your character is supposed to be this really sly fast talker, he will give you a lot of leeway in his NPCs believing you and being easier to influence by your arguments. Or maybe one could do a, a charisma check, a persuasion check, before the uh, actual argument starts. And depending on how the check goes, both the GM and the players can act it out differently. This argument that your character can do something that you can't. I don't think it is the last word on the subject. If my character can do something that I can't, I take it as a challenge personally to be able to do what my character can do, or at least do it theoretically, at least be able to pretend to do what my character would be able to do. I do a lot of live-action roleplay and uh, we simulate fighting with foam weapons, with rubber weapons. To be a good fighter, to play a character who's a good fighter, you actually have to be a good fighter to do your character justice, to play it believable. So uh, I became a competent LARP sword fighter or whatever. I know my way around a sword. And at one point when I was making my costume, my barbarian costume, I came to the point where I thought, how could I improve the costume? And the biggest answer was, uh, the costume would be so much better if I had more muscle and less of a belly. So I started training. And little by little, I became more like the character I portray. I became a lot stronger, fitter, more confident, uh, generally more physically able. But I also learned about sword fighting and unarmed combat techniques. I practiced them with my friends. I'm knowledgeable about weapons and armor and medieval and ancient battle tactics. I've read both the Book of the Five Rings and The Art of War. And by now I'm so proficient in these topics that uh, I really can hold my own in a discussion about them. I actually surprised my fellow players one time when we were having like a wall council and I was coming in as an outsider and they all knew me as a fairly uh, silent fighting guy but not necessarily as someone who has theoretical knowledge in the field of warfare. But uh, the way I talk, the way I could hold an argument and the tactics I presented Suddenly they were all very silent and listened to me. That was a pretty cool feeling. In a tabletop RPG, that is easier. You don't have to be physically strong to play a physical strong character. You just have to know the theory. How do you get physical strong? What are like the habits of a physical strong character? 
And how would a physically strong character apply that force without uh, hurting themselves? How would they carry themselves? As I said, I really take it as a challenge. When I played a maid for the first time, and that was years and years after I started playing, I just never got around to really play a maid. But when I did, that was the first time I portrayed a character that uh, was supposedly smarter than myself. And I took it as a challenge to act as intelligent, as smart as I could. And then we went into this dungeon. It, it was a puzzle-type dungeon where each room was a puzzle and presented a unique challenge you had to solve with your mind. And I just blew through there. I had uh, the solution for most of these puzzles within minutes, within seconds. And that felt really good. I have absolutely no idea how any of that worked. Maybe uh, I am just that smart, maybe I'm not. Maybe this challenge, maybe me trying to get into the mindset of a really smart person helped me overcome these challenges. Uh, it was pretty fun to play, anyhow. Or take something like a survival check, a wilderness check, a hunting check. You uh, don't have to be actually able to survive in the wilderness alone for a year in Canadian winter. But um, if you've watched a few hours of survival videos on YouTube, you can do a pretty good job at pretending to be this character and acting in certain ways, doing certain things to portray this character, to help your character survive in the wilderness, uh, no matter how good or how bad your worlds are. All of that said, and this was supposed to be a video about combat, I personally don't need elaborate rules for either combat, uh, social interaction, survival and so on. Because uh, over the years I have broadened my knowledge and I'm pretty confident I can judge these situations without consulting a rule book. And what I would be looking for in a rule system is that the rules enable me to use this knowledge that I have without the rule system getting in the way of that. There are huge differences in uh, combat systems, even within the same drawer. I mean, it's pretty clear if you're having a different drawer, you need different rules. If you are playing a um, modern military game of the Gang of Mercenaries, you suddenly need rules for firearms, tank combat, um, modern weapons, cover fire, smoke grenades, and so on. If you're running a wartime scenario, you maybe need rules for battles, or at least skirmishes, that may be different from the normal combat rules, because those usually break down past a certain number of combatants. But even within the same genre, let's say within heroic fantasy, there are very different combat systems. Let's start with D&D once again. Uh, and even within D&D, and uh, like in third edition, positioning was a critical component of your combat, because you really had to go into flanking positions to get flanking and sneak attack bonuses on your opponent. And now it's a bit easier. Usually your opponent just has to be engaged in melee with one of your allies and then you can flank him. And uh, that actually makes it easier to play with addition with theater of the mind because positioning is no longer that important. Or take uh, the Dark Eye 4th edition there you had to actively 
defend from each attack and you only had one defend action per round. Maybe too if your character had a shield and was really proficient you had two defend actions but each attack against you you had to spend a defend action. So uh, one combat tactic you would use against your opponent would be to make him use up these defend actions before hitting him with the real attack. So maybe let the worst fighters of your group, let the mage who has no more mana to cast, attack with, it, with his quarter stuff first, maybe even two times, to exhaust your opponent's defense. And then the warrior hits him with his two-handed swords, dealing massive damage. So it became this game of trying to get around your opponent's defense, trying to make him unable to defend himself, and doing that by any means necessary, be that stealth, sneak attacks, poison in his wine, magic, group tactics. Downside is the combat system was fairly slow. If, uh, especially in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you would have what would happen many times is that you would attack, your opponent would parry. He would attack, you would parry, and so on. Because in those situations it was really hard to gain the advantage and get around your opponent's defense. And that could drag on for quite a while. Or take Splittermond, which has something called Tick System for its initiative system. And in this system, uh, each action you do takes different number of ticks. And just always go down this tick list. Uh, and whoever is next in his tick list is next. So, um, for example, it's your turn, you're on top of the tick list. And you swing your dagger. That's fairly quick, so it's like three ticks down. And after that... You go down the tick list and it's your turn again. But if you do something slower, casting a spell or swinging your big two-handed axe, that may take six ticks or ten ticks. So it's your turn, you do your slow action, and then it's someone else's turn. And maybe they can do several attacks with their dagger before it's your turn again to swing your giant barbarian axe. Now that sounded pretty fun in theory when I started playing, but in practice I found that the whole combat tactics transferred from uh, the map, from the combat map, from the terrain, from positioning to the tick list. And everything was about how long an action took and who could act before whom. And I didn't find that really engaging. As I said, I like to apply my real-world knowledge in RPGs and the tick list is too abstract a concept to take my real-world knowledge and apply it. That works just better with a system where positioning is important than uh, timing. I'll take D&D 5th edition, 5e. In my experience, positioning is really not all that important. Winning initiative, not all that important. Stealth and surprise is nice to have, but it's really not all that important. Because the PCs and the opponents tend to have so much magic ability at their disposal. You can overcome an initial disadvantage if you ran into an ambush or something by healing back up your hit points and then using your spells to better the enemy into submission. And many of these spells are actually to control your enemies. Something like hold person, charm person, fear and so on are uh, control spells. Spells that set up your enemy for an attack or take him out of the fight while you'll deal with a more dangerous threat. 
So I find that in 5e, much of the tactics involved in combat come down to having uh, a good combination of spells and ability across the different classes in your party. And once again, I don't like it that much because I can't apply my real-world knowledge in these combat situations. So it's kind of fun to find these effective combinations of spells and abilities. It's a bit like a, like a puzzle game and you're trying to solve the puzzle to find the optimal way to uh, dispatch your enemies fast without them being able to deal b damage back to you. As I said last time, I think there's potential to have a combat system where you don't roll for attacks, but you just roll for damage. And whoever does more damage will win the fight. Now I could go into some more combat situation and combat tactics, but I think I will save that for its own video and end this one right here. So, what's your favorite RPG combat system and why? Or if you were to design your own combat system, what would be the basis of it? Let me know in the comments below. So always, thanks for watching and goodbye.